Hello, and welcome to another year of First Lego League. We at FRC Team 932 are here to give you the rundown of the rules so you can better understand the game. First, I'm going to explain the starting locations of the models that are loose on the field. The base contains the dog and trainer, the white gecko, five manure samples, a prosthesis, the shark in its tank, and the reindeer. Items that are loose on the field are the pet pig, the zoologist, the bee, two more manure samples, a seal with a camera that can be removed, a gorilla, flamingo, bat, and frogs. We will explain what to do with each of these items as well as the models that are attached to the field. The first attached model we will discuss is the transfer platform. Before the match starts, both teams should place one animal on the transfer tray for the animal conservation mission. The only animals eligible for transfer are the reindeer, gorilla, flamingo, bat, and frogs. You need to work with the team on the adjoining table before choosing the animal to place on the transfer tray. Both teams should not place the same animal in the tray in order to score points for this mission. When placing your animals, ensure that the animal is facing the direction specified in the rules. Use the compass drawing on the field mat to determine the direction. Also, be sure to place the animal against the north border of the tray and centered from east to west. The reindeer faces west, the gorilla faces south, the bat faces south, the flamingo faces east, and the frogs face south and west. If you place an animal other than the reindeer on the transfer tray, then the reindeer takes the place of the animal you use on the field. Place the reindeer facing west on the other animal's mark. During the match, a robot from either table can operate the yellow bar to make the platform rotate. Note that the platform will rotate halfway around and then stop because of the red arm. A properly built platform will move easily. Many people build this model incorrectly. Pay close attention when you build it. Once the switch is complete, both teams earn 20 points for each pair of animals that matches another animal on the same table. If done correctly, both teams would earn 40 points. After the first transfer is complete, your robot is allowed to remove the model on your side and place another animal on the tray. The referee will reset the red arm to allow the platform to rotate again. Think carefully about how and when doing this might be to your advantage. For the service dog mission, the starting configuration is with the warning fence up, the man's arm down, and the end of the cane on the black dot. If the robot has traveled west to east between the barriers and moved the warning fence into a down position, your team will earn 15 points at the end of the match. To score for the shark shipment mission, your robot must move the shark and its tank to sit completely inside one of the target areas. If the shark tank is sitting completely inside target 1, your team scores 7 points. If it is sitting completely inside target 2, your team scores 10 points. If the tank is in one of the targets and the shark is not touching the walls of the tank, then your team earns a 20 point bonus. Note that neither you nor your robot may touch the shark after it has left the base. For the feeding mission, the refrigerator is preloaded randomly with eight pieces of food, which consist of four colors. The mission objective is to collect the food and place matching colors in each of the circular target areas for the four animals on the mat. Note that you get 10 points for each piece of food in a target animal area for a maximum of 80 points. You can place just one or you can place two in a target animal area if the colors match. You do not have to place food in all four target animal areas to score points. It does not matter which color of food your robot places in each target as long as the color of the pieces match if two pieces are placed. Your robot will need to operate the refrigerator from either the front or back to eject the food. The robot can either catch the food or drag it. You'll probably want to bring the food pieces back to base to sort the colors and start a new program to deliver the food to the targets. For the beekeeping mission, your robot must pick up the bee and place it on the beehive. The honey will be released, which may roll into the base, or your robot can capture the honey and move it into the base. If at the end of the match the bee is on the beehive and the honey has been ejected, your team earns 12 points. If the honey is in the base at the end of the match, your team will earn an additional 3 points for a total of 15 points. In the panda release mission, the robot's objective is to convert the panda scene from the facility care where the red bars are at the right angles to open wilderness with the red bars parallel to each other. 
At the end of the match, if the slider section appears fully rotated clockwise, your team earns 10 points. The training and research mission involves moving various pieces into the training and research area. Your robot may move the dog and trainer from the base to the area for 12 points. Your robot moves the zoologist from the panda area to the training and research area for 15 points. You have 5 manure samples in base and 2 manure samples out in the field. You may only move one manure sample at a time to the training and research area. Each manure sample completely in the area earns 5 points. If your robot moves all 7 samples to the area by the end of the match, your team will earn 5 bonus points. For the prosthesis mission, your robot will need to move the pet pig to the base. You may then attach the prosthesis to the pig by hand, which will earn your team 9 points. If your robot moves the pet pig to the farm area before the end of the match, your team earns an additional 6 points, for a total of 15 points for this mission. There is a removable camera on the seal in the southeast corner of the field. If your robot can move the camera completely into the base, your team earns 15 points. If your team also moves the seal completely into base without it breaking, your team earns an additional 1 point. It is permitted to move the camera and the seal together. For the milking automation mission, the red lever must start over its mark and the release cow should be pulled all the way out, which prevents the machine from moving. The left dispenser ramp should be loaded with milk, and the right dispenser ramp should be loaded with manure. These directions are determined by looking directly at the release cow. To score in the milking automation mission, the robot must guide the cow into the machine and spin the machine clockwise to release the milk. Spinning the machine too far will release the manure also, which reduces the team's overall score. Releasing just the milk earns 20 points, but releasing milk and manure earns just 15 points. Your robot can move the milk for additional points. If the robot moves all three milk to the base by the end of the match, your team earns one additional point. If all three milk are on the ramp in any fashion at the end of the match, even if supported by the robot, your team earns two points. If all three milk are the only things touching the ramp at the end of the match, your team earns three points. If all three milk are the only things touching the ramp and they are standing up at the end of the match, your team earns four points. Note that the ramp th starts the match tilted downward towards the west end of the field. The ramp is available for the robot to move across to travel from one end of the field to the other. For the biomimicry mission, your robot will transport the white gecko from base to the biomimicry wall and hang it which will earn your team 15 points. If at the end of the match the wall is also supporting all the weight of your robot, meaning the robot is not touching anything but the wall and the green or white gecko, then your team will earn 32 points. That's it for mission and scoring. You should take care to maintain the mission models by straightening and tightening connections regularly. Also, ensure that spinning axles spin freely. Keep your mat clean by using a vacuum or a damp cloth for dust and debris above and below the mat. Remember that the mat should be centered from east to west, and it should touch the south wall. If the mat is curling up at the east or west edges, you may use a small amount of black electrical tape. Do not use the dual lock under the mat or use dual lock for anything on the field other than as specifically required for the mission models.